<coughs> okay, question 42 discusses, in, uh, it, the question discusses in particular what we, what we call the roots of unity. Roots of unity, it's a, it's a standard fixed term. If you hear that, you, ha you have to imagine one particular thing all the time. I mean, I mean if you hear that in the, in the realm, in the universe of complex numbers. Roots of unity, that's a solution to the equation like this. Before I use the Z letter, it is just conventional. It's just a convention that when, when we discuss roots of unity, so we very often replace the Z letter with this Greek letter, amiga. With the Greek letter amiga like this. As we discovered with you on the previous slide, such an equation always has n different solutions. So if you just apply this logic here, you, you, we will conclude that we have exactly n different roots of unities. Here they are. I mean, if you, if you convert this one into the exponential form like I did before on my previous slide, that's a conversion. And you can you can put this, uh, you can put any integer in place of this k, but only n different values for this integer will give, will give you n different roots of unities. Here they are. And you k, well, I normally choose the range between 0 and take 1 all the time. So here's my roots of unities. I have a picture here which shows you these roots of unities for the n. I can't give you the picture for any n, obviously. So I just chose n equals 7. And for n equals 7, here's my uh, seven roots of unity. Here they are. In fact, in fact, actually, I have I have a parameter here in this in this sort of scripting language which gives you the picture. I can alter it to anything I wish. I can make it nine if you wish. Is the nine roots of unity? Which you can I can play with this as much as I wish, but actually seven is fine. I'll just go back to seven. So here's my roots of unities. All of them are positioned in the vertices of the perfect n gone. Even though I use n n for the picture, you see, I just I just told you that this will be the the last one, and this is the w amiga not. I'm sorry. Now the question 42 itself it says this: uh, choose a root of unity. Anyone we have n in general, choose anyone, but not the, not the trivial one, not the very first one, not the one which is unity itself. So, that's what it said here. If your k is not zero, then your root of unity, it will be non-trivial root, it will be different from unity itself. Now, the question itself says, choose such a, such a root of unity and prove that if you take the sum of the powers of this particular root of unity, all of the powers from 1 to n, the result will be 0. Here's my question mark, emphasizing that we have to prove this identity. That's a part of the question 42. And prove that now, this time I'll give you a chance to just suggest something. Do you, do, you, do you have any suggestions how we can do that? Yes, thank you very much. That's, that's, do, you, do you have like a nice name for this, for this technique? All right, that's a good name. I accept maybe some other names, alternative names. Well, factorization is a good, but it's a general term. More specifically, you can say, effectively, what you're suggesting is the sum of the geometric progression formula. Isn't it? It's the same thing. It's just two different angles of looking at the same formula. That's the formula which you're talking about. This is a factorization formula you mentioned. Is that right? That's right, but if you take this factor, and if you just divide the right-hand side by this factor, that will be the formula for the sum of the geometric progression, isn't it? Have you ever thought of that? That the same formula actually has two different guises? But anyway, either way, we can use this formula for the factorization, and it gives me, basically, it almost immediately gives me the answer, because, well, the left-hand side, and when I say left-hand side, I mean this left-hand side, well, with the help of this formula, or with the help of the sum of the geometric progression formula, it becomes the expression like so. And here comes the importance of this original assumption, that we choose the root of unity different from 1. So this expression in the denominator makes sense. We can put it there because it's not 0. 
Well, but on the other hand, the numerator, it's effectively zero because the root of unity is a solution to this, and we end up with zero. It's a very simple question. As long as you remember that the the sum of the, the formula for the sum of the geometric progression of this factorization formula. From this question, I can make one extra development. Look at this. If you have this proof now, we can just take this identity and uh, write for this identity the real and imaginary part alone, and then you will come up even you will come up with even more interesting identity. Here it is. Look at this. The real part of this number, what is it? It's the cos of this angle, isn't it? Or cos of this angle. Well, I should correct myself, actually. What I'm saying is, this is true for, what I'm saying is this. This identity, we just proved it, uh, for every k except for k0, right? So this identity is true for any k1, 2, and take 1. Oops. I don't know uh, if you ever seen. Uh, I'm not sure if you ever seen this this symbol. This symbol means any or for any. So we effectively will prove this identity for any k from this range. The only k for which we haven't proved it is zero. Because if k is zero, we cannot divide by zero. But on the other hand, when k is zero, we know exactly what this value will be, right? What the value? What will be the value of the left hand side when k is exactly zero? What's the value of the left-hand side with k when k is 0? n, because in that case, omega naught is 1. Any, any power of omega naught is 1 again. You just you have sum of n different unities, or of n unities, which is n. Now, let's just take uh, oops, omega 1, first one. For this omega 1, we do have such an identity. We do. What will be the real part of the omega 1? Well, it's simple. If I just introduce this alpha notation for the angle 2 pi on n, the real part of omega 1, first, non-trivial roots of unity, this real part, is simply the cos of this angle. The real part of the omega 1 square, it will be double of this angle, isn't it? Because when you square, you double the angle. So if you take the real part from here, the real part from here, the real, the real part from the rest of them, that will be this expression. But if you take the real part of the right-hand side, which we now know is 0, it will, be the, it will be 0 here. And the same is true when you take the imaginary parts. I wonder if anyone in this class can prove this directly without complex numbers. It, it won't be it won't be easy. Maybe I mean maybe it's doable. Actually, I, I'm not sure. I mean I never seen the proof, but probably it's doable. Of course, of course it's doable. But it will be a lot a lot longer argument if you try to prove this directly without the usage of a complex number.